It's not the first time that the International Space Station has sprung a leak, but this one's been an unusually persistent one. Uh, it has uh, basically defied uh, everyone's attempts to uh, to work out where the leak is. So what's been happening is that the three astronauts on board, uh, one American and two Russians, have moved to the, the most uh, stable module on the whole space station. There are about a dozen modules on it. Uh, this one's called Shvezda, which is a Russian word meaning star. Uh, that is where you know the, the, some of the, the uh, life support systems are located. It's perhaps the safest part of the whole space station. Uh, and in the meantime, shutting all the doors between the individual modules to let mission control have a go at pressurizing each one to see which one is actually leaking. So the crew are all safe, according to NASA. How does this get fixed? <laughs> so the last time it happened, uh, and this is about two years ago, uh, there was a leak found actually in a service module that was due to return to Earth. And it was a two millimeter hole, and they fixed it with epoxy and sticky tape, uh, which actually did the job. You know, the most crude imaginable uh, remedy, uh, it fixed the problem. But that was on, a, on something that was going to burn up in the atmosphere anyway. This, uh, whatever it is, might need something a little bit more thoroughly engineered uh, but you can bet your life there will be an improvised uh, you know an improvised solution found to start with are there any issues with the american astronauts sharing the russian section given the fraught diplomatic relationship between the us and russia uh, when astronauts go to the space station, they leave all of politics behind. Uh, it is genuinely um, a, a, an international environment. Well, I guess and, you don't need your passport, do you? You don't need your passport, that's right. Uh, and, you know, they, uh, in fact, the crews are, ba are bonded together by something that is uniquely uh, given to astronauts. Most of us can't uh, imagine a bond like the one that people traveling in space uh, achieve. It's quite remarkable. So politics are left behind. Now, last week, Australia approved the landing of a Japanese spacecraft to take place in December, and it's carrying some precious cargo. What is it and why is it so important? It, it is extraordinarily precious. It's, uh, it's some bits of space rock. They've come from an asteroid by the name of Ryugu, which has been visited by a Japanese spacecraft called Hayabusa 2, because there was a Hayabusa 1 a few years ago. And what that spacecraft has done is orbited Ryugu, uh, but also launched uh, probes onto it. And in particular, it sort of fired a bullet at it to create a crater uh, from which samples have now been taken. So these are samples of the subsurface soil of an asteroid, which is something that has never been done before. It's on its way back to Earth in December, on the 6th of December. It will actually, the, the spacecraft will jettison a small uh, probe. It's a tiny little um, uh, re-entry module, basically, a bit like the, the ones that astronauts ride in, but much, much smaller, only about half a metre across. That will re-enter the Earth's atmosphere, carrying this precious targo, ca cargo with it. Uh, and its target will be the Woomera area, the Woomera prohibited area, as it's called, uh, down in South Australia. So we will play our part in this recovery. Extraordinarily uh, valuable from a scientific perspective. Asteroid soil is, it probably predates the Earth itself, so it tells us about our origins. How exciting, Fred Watson. I'm sure we'll speak to you about it again in December. I hope so. Thank you very much.